Welcome to this Premiere Pro tutorial where I'll show you how to create this vintage old film look in Premiere Pro. All right, so to start out, you're gonna need a video clip and you can use any video clip you've shot or something that was available from the course if you're taking the course. And then in the course as well, there is a downloadable folder called overlays. So you'll want to bring that into Premiere Pro. The video I'm using is from Storyblocks, and so this is not available to you unless you have a Storyblocks account, but any clip will work. So I'm going to walk through this step by step. Here's the end version, so you're going to kind of see what we're going for. We're kind of combining a couple different styles of film from old school black and white to super eight millimeter film and in general we're just trying to get that vintage vibe so the first thing we're going to do is apply these overlays so we have a dust and scratches overlay and so i'm just going to put that on top of my video track on track two i'm going to delete my audio just by option clicking the audio and then the super eight track as well i'm going to put on track three for now let me just actually turn off track three so we can see the dust and scratches track on track two. Selecting dust and scratches, we're going to go up to effect controls. Make sure we have that selected. And we're going to turn the opacity blend mode to screen. That's going to get rid of all of the black of that video. And it will just leave the white dust and scratches that appear or the non-black dust and scratches. So that's step one. The second step is to give that sort of framing of a vintage projector or a vintage film. Now I've given you this super eight millimeter and both of these are free to use. They were from pixels.com pixels and pixabay.com, commercial free files to use. So feel free to use them on your own projects. So to get rid of the white or the lighter part of this film clip, we're going to change the opacity blend mode to darken. Multiply is another one that I generally use, but with multiply, it's not perfect. You can actually still see some of the video clip from the side behind that because this isn't a perfectly black and white clip. Another thing we could do is if we want to leave it at multiply, if you don't like the darken look, because the multiply leaves a little bit of that vintage warmth of that clip, we can actually go to multiply, we can go over to our Lumetri color panel. And with the Super 8 clip selected, if we go to curves and we drag the RGB curve black point down here over to the right just a little bit, it makes that outer border pure black. And so it does not show the background through it. So that's just a hot tip for that. I'm gonna leave the Lumetri color panel open because we're gonna play around with that. So now we have our basic look and this is done with these overlays. These dust and scratches is a little bit strong in my opinion. I'm going to just drop the opacity to like 80% just so that the film sort of blends in with the background clip. Another thing I think that really will help sell this effect is speeding up the background clip. So this clip was shot in slow-mo. And so I'm going to right click, choose speed duration, and I'm just going to speed it up to 175. I played around with this one before, and I think that 175 is about normal speed. It might be a little bit faster than normal speed, and that's totally fine because I feel like with these in vintage cameras, sometimes the speed of them weren't perfect, especially for the more inexpensive cameras that people can buy from home. So that's pretty awesome. The next thing we're going to do is do a little bit of color grading. So I'm actually going to take my super eight millimeter and dust and scratches clip and move it up a track so that I can add an adjustment layer in between. And if you don't know, an adjustment layer is down in this new item button adjustment layer, it'll pop up here and you can just apply it to this track. And now everything we apply to this adjustment layer will apply to whatever's beneath it. 
and I want it to apply just to the video clip and not to the Super 8 or Dust and Scratches, and that's why I'm putting it below those two tracks. So with the adjustment layer selected, let's go to the Lumetri color panel. If we drop this down to black and white, that automatically gives it more of that vintage look. We can also play around with the overall exposure. We know that old cameras, again, especially the more inexpensive ones, if you're using Super 8 or, or what have you, it didn't get exposures as, it didn't have a, as much dynamic range as modern cameras. So we might like boost the whites. I still want a little bit of contrast, but I don't mind sort of that faded look with the blacks being up high. Something like that looks pretty good. Maybe a little bit too overexposed. So that looks pretty good. Another thing we might want to do is under the creative tab, we might want to drop our sharpening just a little bit because this old film, it was rarely as sharp as our modern cameras. The focusing mechanisms weren't as easy to use and that super sharp sort of style that we get now is not exactly what it was like back in the days of shooting on film. So that helps sell it even a little bit too. The next thing we might wanna do is add a little bit of a vignette to this clip. So I'm going to drop my vignette all the way down. I'm going to increase the feathering and drop the midpoint all the way down as well and also increase the roundness just a little bit. And then from there, we can actually play around with these settings to whatever you think looks good. See what it would look like without a feather. Feathering, of course, we want some feathering for this. And that's a pretty darn solid film look. Now, say you don't want the black and white look, that's totally fine too. Of course, we can just bring it up our saturation our contrast is a little bit high, but that's not bad. Maybe we want to add sort of a warm tint to it. So we just take our temperature slider, slide it up. Maybe just drop our saturation just a little bit. And this is more of that sort of super eight millimeter look that you might be going for. So that's pretty much all you need to do to get this effect. I'm going to continue and show you a couple tricks if you don't have these super eight millimeter and dust and scratches effects or don't want to use them, we can still get a pretty good effect right with all of the tools we have in Premiere Pro. So under effects, if we have go and search for grain, we have the noise and grain folder. If we type, take this noise filter, apply it to the adjustment layer again, and then go up to effect controls, we can add a bit of grain so this isn't going to be that dust and scratches vibe or that look, but the grain, the noise does help uh, a little bit. And you might want to apply a little bit of grain along with these other overlays as well to really add some quality to that look. Now, how do we get that sort of vignette overlay look? Well, we do have a couple letterbox overlays. If we want a clean 133 aspect ratio, I give you this one. This is a standard old aspect ratio. Or the 150 is the standard for 35 millimeter film. But if you want to create something more custom with that sort of vignetted look like this, like sort of the rounded edges, what you can do is create a black layer. So to do that, just click the new item button and choose black video. Click OK, and it's going to match our sequence settings. Drag that on top of our layer. And now this is just a completely black clip. What we're going to do is then create a four point polygon mask. So when we do that, it creates this rectangle. So we're going to invert this so that we're seeing inside this rectangle. And then to get the rounded edges, we're going to use the mask expansion to round those edges. Now, notice if I go all the way, it starts to become more of a circle. 
So we are going to have to move these anchor points or these handles in the rectangle to another spot, but get that rounded edge to about where you want it. For me, it's about 90, and this is a 4K sequence, so it might be different depending on your sequence settings. I would suggest turning on your safe margins, and then what we can do is we can click and drag over the edges so that we can select both of these points. I'm holding the shift key down and I'm just going to drag these points over to this line. So I turned on safe margins. If you don't see that, click the button editor, find the safe margins button, it looks like this, and drag it onto your buttons down here and turn that on or off. Now the reason I am holding the shift button is because if I don't hold shift, it's easy to accidentally adjust these left or right and I don't want that. You can see I actually already messed up. So you could just take one at a time. It doesn't have to be perfect because film was not perfect, but holding the shift button does help lock it in place in the vertical and horizontal moves that you're doing with your mouse. All right, so now with the safe margins button off, I'm going to increase the feathering of this quite a bit. Now if I click off, you can see that now we have that sort of look. Now something that happens with this clip with the feathering and everything is that I start to see a little bit of the edge of this video over here. So I'm actually going to take the scale of this layer and just increase it just a little bit so that the edge doesn't show. And so just with this effect, you get, or with the effects right within Premiere Pro, you get a pretty solid looking clip. If I take my saturation down, we can get that black and white look. You can adjust your overlay to any specific size. So say you definitely want your overlay to be that vintage 133 aspect ratio. What I would do is put this 133 layer underneath my black video. And now with this mask selected, I can bring these two clips or these two edges in until it's closer to that 133 aspect ratio like this and kind of use it as a guide and then delete that 133 aspect ratio. So you can kind of use those overlay letterbox overlays as a guide to get a more accurate aspect ratio. All right, that is how you create the old film look in Premiere Pro, both with the overlays that I've provided and with effects right within Premiere. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you in another tutorial.